the Bulow, the Bulow launch event. I'd like to welcome everybody on this call to the Bulow launch event. Uh, a huge thank you to David Evans uh, for inspiring this event. Oh, a huge great. thank you yeah, to Anna great. Hutchinson <laughs> for great. helping us reach out to the regions and the nations. I'm speaking from Wales as it happens. And to all of you for attending. It's a fantastic turnout, which I think owes more to David's uh, star quality than uh, to mine. But uh, let me, if I may, just run through the agenda quickly so you know what to expect. And I'll start with the cast iron guarantee I've already given that we will finish by seven. So nobody's going to miss a sporting event tonight. So what we're going to do, I'll, I'll, I'll give a bit of an introduction to the, uh, the Bulo concept. Uh, what it's about and, and how to make it happen. Then I'll hand over to David Evans, who will talk about the electoral dimension, how Bulos can help us win back seats. Then I'll invite Seema Malhotra, MP, to talk about the parliamentary uh, dimension, why Labour MPs need Bulos. Then Del Goddard uh, will talk about uh, appointing a Bulo in his constituency of Planet South. A bit of a case study there. Um, Liz Hind, who co-chairs our Labour Business Women in Business Policy Group and is the Bulow for Aylesbury CLP, will talk about the role of the Bulow and why we need diversity among our Bulows. Then Councillor Manju Shahul Hamid, who's a Labour councillor in Croydon and a cabinet member for business recovery, will talk about the local government dimension and how Bulos need to work with local councillors. And then Darry Taylor, the Tulo for Redcar, and a former MP for Stockton South, who's the Tulo for Redcar, will talk about Tulos working together with Bulos. We'll leave as much time as we can for Q&A, but if you've got questions, please put them in the Q&A as we go along. We'll try and pick them up uh, throughout the meeting. And uh, we will finish at seven. So if we could now take the agenda off the screen, Liz, I will give a bit of a, uh, an overview of the Bulo. Uh, so a word about, about my background, where I'm coming from, a word about labor business for those of you who aren't familiar with us, and then a little bit more about the Bulo. Um, I'm tribal labor. And my dad was a labor candidate in 1945. Uh, Jack Jones was another hero of mine. I worked for him between school and, and uni. I've had a career, and I, I should say I'm still a member of Unite, um, and I have had a career as a technology lawyer in the US and the UK, including business experience of chair uh, of, a, of an international law firm and currently on the board of a media tech company. Uh, in the Labour Party, I was on the NPF for 10 years. Uh, parliamentary candidate in Monmouth, where I'm, I'm sitting now, in 2010. And as my friends in, 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 in Welsh Labour will tell you, uh, it, it's rare that Labour holds Monmouth, and 2010 was not uh, the year to win it back. Uh, since 2015, I've been chair of Labour Business. So that's me. Uh, a word about Labour Business. It used to be known as ELFIG, or the Labour Finance and Industry Group, renamed in 2015 as Labour Business. That's what it says on the tin. Uh, we are the link between the party and the business community. Uh, our members are Labour Party members in businesses of all sorts, small, medium and large, all over the country. And we're one of the 21 socialist societies affiliated to the party. Labour business was founded by Harold Wilson, no less, uh, to enable the party to have a conversation with the business community on the basis that if we don't listen to business, uh, we can't expect business to listen to us. And without that conversation, Labour can't road test our business policies, can't establish our economic credibility and can't win elections. And in a, a nutshell, our key mission is to bust the myth, and it is a myth that the Tories are the party of business, and to reaffirm that Labour is the natural party of business, as well as the natural party of workers and their trade unions. And we do this through business engagement, policy development with the front bench and policy forum, media campaigning, at the national level, but it's our bulos, our business liaison officers in partnership with trade union liaison officers that carry on this work at the local level, working closely with the party's business relations unit in uh, headquarters and with existing business networks in the regions and the nations. So what is a bulo about? 
We launched the Bulow Initiative in 2017, shortly after the general election, with strong support from Jeremy Corbyn, Don McDonnell, Becky Long Bailey. Uh, many CLPs have already appointed a Bulow, and you'll hear from uh, a couple of them today. To be a Bulow, obviously, for your CLP, you have to be a member of the CLP. You have no additional voting rights on the EC or the GC. No rule change is required. It's just a simple resolution of whether at an all member meeting or a GC meeting or an AGM, uh, along with other functional uh, officer appointments. A Bulow must also be a member of Labour Business, but is entitled to free membership, so there is no cost to being a Bulow. But we need to have a connection with Bulows, otherwise we can't communicate with them. In return, we provide support on business engagement and policy development in your CLP. But to be very, very clear, the Bulow is in addition to the Tulo. The idea is that they will work in partnership. The clue is in the name. We chose a clunky name to make the point that Bulow and Tulo are two sides of the same coin. We are keeping labor unions and Tulo in the loop on this campaign. Our target this year, which uh, we've agreed with David, is that a Bulow should be appointed in every foundation seat by the end of the year and in 50% of all other seats. And hopefully we'll exceed that target. This goal uh, is strongly supported by Keir Starmer and his new front bench team. It's never been a factional thing. It's been supported by the last leadership, as I said, and supported by the new leadership. And you'll have seen Ed Miliband's endorsement in the letter of invitation that David sent out. And I just had a message from Becky Long Bailey, who asked me to say that she's still a very strong supporter of the Bulow campaign. So what does the business liaison officer do? It really is up to each CLP to decide what it wants its Bulow to do. But among other things, a Bulow might identify members of your CLP who are in business themselves, make an industry of key, an inventory of key local businesses and reach out to them to show that Labour is listening and wants to hear from them, organize business roundtables, uh, listen to businesses and shops and on the high street, hold joint meetings with businesses and trade unions to discuss the value of partnership, provide speakers, conduct surveys, uh, conduct equalities impact assessments of business support by the government. This is something that Liz Hind will talk about later. Uh, organizing petitions, inviting local business leaders to meet our representatives, councillors, metro mayors, and so on. So there, there's no limit to the number of things that the, the Bureau can do. We're not trying to be prescriptive, but that's uh, to give you an idea. What can we do at, at Labour Business to help? Well, we can provide a model resolution for your CLP to appoint its own Bureau, including a suggested job description, a package of business engagement materials, to help you organize your own roundtables, speakers for meetings, local business contacts and contacts with other Bulos and, and other Labour business members in your area. A few final points. Parliamentary support is really important. Obviously, at the moment, we're expecting the focus of this year's campaign to be on foundation seats without a Labour MP. But we want to assure that the PLP is actively involved and Seema Malhotra is leading the charge on that and you'll hear from her shortly. Um, there's a question of affiliation. As a social society, we have an active program of affiliating to CLPs up and down the country to strengthen our links with local members. Um, and many CLPs are keen for us to affiliate as a first step uh, on the road to a Bureau appointment and, and we're very happy to do that. Equally though, affiliation by Labour Business is not a precondition of appointing a Bulow. There's a regional dimension. We're very keen to ensure that Bulows play their part in supporting the party's existing business networks in all the regions and nations. Uh, Bulows will be tasked with making it as easy as possible for every region and nation to reap the full benefits of local business engagement. And you'll hear more about that from David. And last but not least, I want to make an important point, which is that Labour Business is totally committed to promoting the maximum possible diversity of uh, uh, underrepresented groups from the business community and in the business community. Uh, women, young people, uh, members of the BAME community, anyone who finds it hard to, to find their way in the business world. Uh, and that objective of promoting the maximum diversity applies equally to the appointment of Bulos. 
And although, as I say, it's a matter for each CLP to appoint its own bureau, it's not an appointment that we make, we want to work with CLPs to ensure that across the party as a whole, the bureaus appointed are as representative as possible of those communities that are unrepresented in the world of business. And we'll hear more about that from Liz Hine and from Manju. Next steps, uh, and I'll stop with this. If you'd like to consider appointing a bureau in your CLP, just email us, contact at laborbusiness.org, and we'll provide you with support, material, model resolution, and uh, all that we can do to help you on the road to appointing and making best use of your bureau. That's all from me now. If you've got a question, please put it in the Q&A. We'll try and keep answering those questions as we go along uh, and do our best to answer all of them. That's enough from me, but I'm very, very pleased now to hand over to our General Secretary. David, as I say, has been an inspiration. I first discussed this idea with him late last year, and he's got some very strong views about the electoral importance of the work that Bulos do. So David, can I invite you to speak to us? Uh, Hamish, thank you very much. And thank you to you and everybody for putting on this um, this event, I see the number of participants in, It's truly impressive when people might have other things this evening to distract them, um, not necessarily in Scotland or Wales, but um, uh, it, I'm really delighted to be here on, on this and part of this august panel. Some of you I know, some of you I'm looking forward to getting to know um, uh, in the future. Um, I think um, I'd just like to pick up on a on, on some parts of your introduction, Hamish. Uh, for me, one of the um, really positive aspects of this initiative is that it is kind of bottom up. Um, you know, it is a voluntary position. Uh, it has no sort of constitutional status. Uh, we're hoping that uh, really excellent people, and I know they will, will come forward to do the to do the work because it's it's it's, it's vitally important. Uh, I think we will learn as we go. Um, the establishment of a kind of net support network of Bulos to share best practice and to um, to really support each other, um, I think is the way we, with a massive job that we've got with the need to win 125 plus seats at the next general election, we're going to have to do more with less. We're going to have to uh, work in a pluralistic, bottom-up way where we're making the absolute most of the assets that we have. And of course, our assets are primarily our membership, um, as well, of course, as the partnerships that Hamish rightly alludes to, and more about that in a minute, I want to point to the, the absolute um, uh, primacy of uh, um, the relationship between Bulos and Chulos. I think it's absolutely fundamental. Um, but um, Hamish mentioned that Harold Wilson set up Labour Business back in 1972. Um, since then, of course, the country has changed Apps, you know, massively, um, uh, and I don't. You don't need me to spell out just, you know, just how, how, you know, how that is true. But um, the honest truth is that we need to do more to connect with business. We need to be honest with ourselves and um, realize that we need to do more. Um, if I can be brutally honest, as somebody who uh, set up and ran a small business for twenty years. Um, I felt that many politicians and political parties uh, rarely understood the challenges that I faced uh, or that we faced, just how tough it is to survive and thrive uh, running a small business. That's why I think this Bulow initiative is so vital that it will help us understand that, get alongside people who run businesses, really learn uh, about them, understand them, develop rapport with them. Um, politics is the art of competitive storytelling. So this Bulow initiative will give us access to real stories of real people who are trying to create uh, um, uh, prosperity for communities and providing jobs for people. And we will have, we need those real stories to be able to tell, to, um, to illustrate and give real practical expression to our values. Um, you know, when we have a tin ear, we have a shrill voice. And um, we really need to make sure that, you know, Hamish is absolutely right. The Tories do not 
stand for business. They stand, um, they stand for, well, I'll come on to it in a minute, but, um, uh, you know, they purport to stand for business, but they don't. I think a key dividing line um, uh, that we should exploit is that we stand for responsible business. We stand for the businesses that create jobs, prosperity, strive for good conditions for staff, uh, understand and encourage trade union membership uh, for earned wealth, not unearned wealth. I think there's a key dividing line that we can, uh, we can, can and should exploit. When I was running my own business, we were often undercut by bad companies who unlike us didn't pay the London living wage, didn't have, um, didn't invest in employment practices um, uh, and didn't encourage trade union membership. And I see Manju on the call. Um, we were very proud to be a Croydon good employer where we had to fulfill various criteria uh, about um, uh, how we operated. And we were proud to uh, be a Croydon business that was one of the first to earn the uh, good employer charter. But some of some of the businesses we competed with did not, and um, there was no distinction made by the Conservative Party between a good business and a bad miss, but, but a bad business. So, um, what we need to do with business is what we need to do with voters. I said when I became General Secretary that we need to put voters right at the heart of everything we do. Voters must be our reference point, and tens of thousands of people in each constituency that we need to win, work for a, a, a larger, small or medium sized business. Getting alongside them in work um, is understanding them and hearing them and putting them at the center of our activity. So um, uh, there are thousands of people who are starting their own businesses. We need to be on their side. We need to be shaping the narrative uh, and saying to them that a good, you know, they should they should encourage trade union membership. For example, I'm a lifelong trade union member and a lifelong Labour Party member, so nobody needs to tell me that there's any kind of contradiction. In fact, tr good trade union membership helps good business. Uh, but many people maybe just don't know that or understand that, because sadly, I remember a few years ago I did some work for the TUC where we um, we we did some work with. Um, understanding uh, young workers in private sector low paid jobs. Only 6% of that, that cohort of people are members of a trade union. So I'm keen to work with trade union colleagues to how do we get the message of positive trade union membership to people who are like that and not, not in trade union membership and unlikely to get it from their employer. Working alongside Chulo colleagues, I'm sure we can do a lot to promote the benefits of trade union membership and spell out just how good that is for business too. Um, so we have our work cut out um, uh, to uh, uh, win all those seats. I wouldn't have taken this job unless I was absolutely convinced that we can and we will. Now we've had some good, uh, good news last week with a good by-election victory, um, but it just shows what can be done. Uh, we were rooted in that community. Our candidate uh, reached out to local businesses, sadly not with a Bulo alongside her, but I'm sure Batley and Spen constituency, I hope, will be one of the first to appoint a Bulo uh, officer. But it just shows uh, what you can do where you have a candidate and a party that is really rooted in the community um, and accessing all parts of it. So, um, just to be clear, um, uh, the role of Bulow officers, to my mind, isn't just about getting already, already friendly local businesses, such as the one I used to run, to engage with CLPs and give money and, and, what, and support. It's actually about going much further than that um, uh, and uh, rapidly increasing the number of responsible businesses that the, uh, the Labour Party, our MPs, our front bunch team are engaging with. Um, and um, I firmly believe that this, uh, this initiative will be essential for every key seat um, that we need to reach out um, and, and build that coalition of voters, um, people we, we're not already engaging with. Um, and um, uh, it will be a huge stepping stone. I 
look forward to coming back um, regularly to check in with the programme. Uh, I'm sure Hamish will be in my ear to um, seek the necessary support from the party. Uh, I think it can be an enormously successful contribution um, to the range of things we need to do to win. Um, and uh, I look forward to working with you going forward and helping in my own constituency to make sure we appoint a Bulow uh, um, as soon as possible. Thank you, Hamish, and thank you, everyone. Thank you, David. Um, thank you for your support. Um, this is being recorded, so we, we do have your words um, on uh, the recording, there, and I will be going back to you for your support. But you've been fantastic so far, as has Anna and all your regional directors and general secretaries in the nations. This is a UK-wide, well, at least a GB-wide initiative, although we do have members in Northern Ireland as well, actually. But it's certainly going to be something that we want to spread out from uh, the center, out from London. It's got to be all over this country. And yes, it will focus, as you rightly say, David, on winning back those seats that don't have Labour MPs at the moment. But it must also involve Labour MPs. And so I'm really delighted that we have championship from uh, someone who's not only a, a, a Labour MP, outstanding credentials, also a shadow business minister, but also, most importantly, a vice president of labor business, which we're very proud of. And so can I ask Seema Malhotra, please, to give us the parliamentary perspective? You're still muted, uh, Seema, so if you could unmute. Uh, there you go. Yeah. Fantastic. Thank you very much, Hamish. It's um, a pleasure to join you and also to follow David in what I thought was a really, really um, excellent uh, introduction to um, Bulos um, as well and how they are increasingly moving as part of the innovations of the party about how we respond um, and, and reach out uh, as a party. Um, I um, want to also thank all of you for being here, thank Labour Business for organising this. Um, there are CLPs from across the country, and it is an enormous achievement to have so many people on a call like this, and just an hour before England are due to play as well. But look, we've got CLPs from across the country, north, south, east and west. I think you've all been putting in the chat, and I think what it shows is how much there is an opportunity to work with each other and learn from each other and share some great practice, as David was suggesting. And we've also got great union reps and Tulos, um, I've seen Tony Burke, um, Maya Irulani, um, Born West, so we've got all our, all our big guns out, um, Unite, GMB, Community, um, and you know, great to see Nan Sloan on as well, um, which I think is really great um, from sort of women's perspective too. Look, these changes that we make, um, they don't come by accident, they come because they're needed. They're needed for us to be better in our communities and a better voice for, um, uh, for all across the country. And when we look ahead to the next election, I want a business across the country to be saying it's Labour that has stood with us. Um, I want there to be absolutely no doubt um, that with industry that it's Labour that's the party of business and of a real proper industrial strategy for how our industry will grow into the future. And time and time again, look, it's been Labour that's been listening and backing business over the course of the pandemic, also recognising the role that business has been playing. Sometimes, you know, with a government that's been utterly incoherent in um, its plans and its delivery, our businesses have helped with manufacturing, life-saving PPE, ventilators, um, doing what they can um, in large part to help try and protect employees' jobs. Um, uh, offering um, free, free meals for children, sometimes during half terms, doing their best to keep employees safe um, with public health restrictions. You know, we've seen some awful behaviour as well that fire and rehire practices have highlighted. But that strong voice from the unions and from good businesses too has been really instrumental in trying to get some action on that in Parliament. And I think that's one of the really important stories of the last year um, as well. And look, we know and we should be proud of the role that British business um, has played in this national effort to defeat, um, defeat the virus um, and keep our communities going as well. 
they haven't also been treated fairly. And just this week in base questions, I raised the issue of business rates relief. Um, hospitality businesses alone facing a £100 million bill right now, uh, as of last Thursday, whilst you've got Labour-led Welsh government that's extended that business rates relief so that businesses can manage their costs effectively and help keep people in work and be supported through this period of recovery. So I think that the timing of today's launch is also incredibly important because we are seeking to engage and we are engaging every day um, across different portfolios um, with our business community and engaging where we can up and down the country and where we can be supported by labor in local authorities, labor metro mayors as well, um, to be working you know, where we see different sectors and different challenges to be able to get those voices in and be hearing what labor local authorities and mayors are doing to support regeneration in their areas. And as David said, we can't be inward facing. This is about getting out into the business community in those different areas and sectors, listening to them with the challenges, the actual challenges on the ground, as well as their ambitions. Some of that you've also been highlighting in the, um, in the chat. And you know, the, there are serious issues like, you know, I think George Perez was talking about you know, the Brexit challenges. You know, Brexit is not done. There is a lot more still to be done. And there is a lot more to make sure that life is not made harder for businesses. That's the last thing we should be doing. Um, and that we've got the support um, to be thinking about policy solutions as well to make that easier for businesses to be doing business, making in the UK, growing their business, developing, um, in, in growing jobs, tackling unemployment and making sure they can export across the, country, across the world as well. And winning that 125 receipts back means reaching out in new ways. We've got to do new things and we've got to do new things in new ways. Yeah. Voters absolutely are our reference point. And we know that many thousands, um, many hundreds of thousands, millions are employed in businesses, you know, large or small, um, and they you know, will want to see um, how we're responding to their agendas uh, and their, in their challenges too. Um, you know, this is where Bulos play such an important role. And it might be a Bulo in your CLP, arranging meetings with lo your local businesses, those listing events with local councillors or MPs. And I certainly will want to be um, helping by attending some of those, being able to hear directly um, those discussions and arranging also where we can, where diaries can permit for other front benches to be engaging with you as well and in the seats that we need to be winning back. Now, this is really supported from the heart by um, the business relations team and working closely with Labour Business. And I think we should um, also, you know, be, be um, open that if businesses are curious about working with us for the, a better future for the country, how we tackle climate change, uh, technology, the future of work, employment rights, um, you know, we want to help shape that future. Look, good businesses know that treating employees and the workforce well is what helps keep a sustainable and loyal workforce, is, is what is good for their business as well. And working with us is a, is, a, is a good way for us to build that future together. We want to understand the situation local businesses are finding themselves in today and seeing how we can be better connected. Many of us have either run a business or been self-employed. So we also bring that own experience um, that can be a credible way in which we're engaging um, out with businesses across the country. There are 5.9 million SMEs across the country. And as they're growing, they're creating jobs too in our communities. Many who live and work locally work in SMEs but we want them to be building their businesses in line with responsible business values, responsible labor values that we, that we know are right for our future and our country. And often they'll do that when they know how to make those good choices and they're learning from others who are like-minded. We want to see Bulos working closely in partnership with our Tulos because truly they are two sides of the same coin. And I've seen personally through the pandemic how the best businesses have been working closely with their trade unions, GMB, Unite, Community, and TUC, on areas like aviation that I've been watching closely, how they've worked to try and keep employees in their workplaces, negotiate positively with them, make workplaces COVID secure, giving workforces the confidence to come back into work. 
it's not been by accident. It's been by the very strong relationships they've got with trade unions. And they, you know, and these stories are huge advocates for why trade union recognition should really be a very key part of how we build our future industry across the country. So I think we've got a job to do to bust that myth that the Tories are the party of business. All the evidence, when you look at it closely, shows the contrary. And we need to see the country and business reaffirm that Labour is the party of business, a natural party of business, as well as being a natural party of workers and of their trade unions. So we are excited to be embarking on this journey to work with you, with Labour business, on engagement, bringing our local businesses into our local parties and into our policy making. So I want to thank you all for all your support, for all that you're doing, for being part of that mosaic of engagement that we have across the country and making sure when we get to the next election, we do it with ambassadors for Labour in every sector across our nation. Thank you. Thank you very much, Seema. There'll be applause all around if we could do that on Zoom, but um, you, you get the idea. That's fantastic. And uh, we're so lucky to have you as our champion in, in Parliament. And I know you'll be encouraging all of your colleagues who haven't yet ensured that their CLPs have appointed Bueller to get on with it and uh, not just in the seats without a uh, Labour MP that we need Bueller's. And a great many of your colleagues I know have already uh, embarked upon that journey. Um, I'm going to move say, on to sorry, our... yes, Hamish, one, sorry. I want to go I will just mention in case I don't manage to later. Yeah. We are also developing a toolkit like, um, you know, how to run a, a local engagement event with some right. template letters. So we'll be able to share that with you as well very shortly. That's fantastic. I'm glad to hear that. Um, so I'm going to move on to the next speaker. I'll take um, one question as I go and I'll invite uh, the next speaker to take a question because I saw something from Alan Archibald uh, in Scotland. And I did want to make very clear that reaching out to Scotland is very, very important. And uh, the way we're going to try to address that with David's help, uh, and I've already spoken to a group of his regional directors and general secretaries in the nations, is by ensuring that we are totally rooted in regional and in the nation's uh, structures of business engagement. Ian, Ian Murray in, in, in Scotland is very much aware of this initiative, very supportive of it. So I just wanted to ensure, assure Alan that we will uh, make sure that we have Bulos right across uh, Scotland, as well as in other parts of the, the UK, because we, we don't want the Scots Nats to get away with the idea that they are the party of business any more than the Tories should. So uh, happy to talk to you more about that, Alan, uh, uh, offline. Um, let me turn to Del Goddard. Del uh, has some really relevant experience about how to actually go through a process of appointing a bulo. And I think it's important to say it's not just about pressing a button and uh, you know out pops a bulo from a box. You've got to do some work within your constituency, I think, to bring people on side. And Dell's going to talk about how to do that. So Dell, it's a bit of a case study from you. Dell got on. Still on mute, Dell, if you could unmute. I'm muted. Right. Yeah. Um, right. Yes, the, the, um, it was made slightly easier because I was already a member of our executive and a GC member, so that when the initiative was being launched by Labour Business, I sort of had the inside understanding. Um, I took the documentation which had been produced by Labour Business, which had the endorsements then of Jeremy Corbyn and, and John McDonnell to the EC, and uh, they accepted the argument that we should be having a business focus because Thanet and East Kent wasn't exactly doing very well economically. Um, and they took it to the GC and that proposal was endorsed. So that was a fairly easy process. Um, and we have got model motions, but it wasn't necessarily needed. It was just a recommendation from the EC. Um, however, to actually make it function, which I think is the, the key issue, is that the first act was to for me to send out a letter uh, to all members of, of South Thanet um, to establish a working group uh, of, of those who wanted to participate in giving some substance to the whole approach. I actually got uh, 10 people. Um, now the, the, the interesting bit here was none of them, or two were, uh, including me, um, were GC members. Um, they didn't necessarily come to meetings. 
but they ran small businesses and they were interested in the business agenda. And they were interested in how the business agenda could help to develop that part of the world. And we had a first meeting and I was very encouraged by the fact that those members really were committed to this aspect. And these were, we're talking about two years ago or so. So the, the point here is that we, we actually got going. One of our first acts, which I think galvanized us, um, was that it was in the context of the upcoming district council elections, which is going back a bit, and obviously, and subsequent elections. So we decided that we would make some manifesto suggestions um, to the, the party uh, from a business perspective to ensure that the focus was there, um, that actually it really did uh, demonstrate that the, the manifesto and the Labour Party locally was listening to business because that was the leaflet, those were the leaflets, those were the documents that went out. We also actually went a bit further than that in a way in which we then said, well, there's not just the issue of, uh, of raising the profile in, in certain ways, but one of the key ways which we knew was coming up was everybody was going around door knocking um, and canvassing. And, and I've been doing it for goodness knows how many decades. But the point is that on the canvas sheets and the rest of it, you don't tend to get people when they're walking past, popping into the local business or popping into, uh, in a sense, or raising issues about business if they find that somebody who they've, the doors they've just knocked on uh, is actually running a small business. And it, that, that, in a sense, required a bit of briefing. And so the working group did help to produce some material in order to be able to aid the door knocking and actually get that profile of being business friendly uh, embedded in the way in which we were working and canvassing. We also made a longer term plan. There is, as many of you probably on this uh, webinar will uh, know, is that there is the call to Small Business Saturday, um, the Small Business Saturday in December. So we took that responsibility to ensuring that Labour's profile, although it's a, not a party political event, but nevertheless, we said and worked with uh, Small Business Saturday and with the town teams, where, which we had established relationships with. And that's how we set up a much more active profile in the locality. At the same time, we also uh, attended uh, Chamber of Commerce uh, meetings um, and actually to the one I first went to. Um, there were no Labour people there at all. They may have been quiet in that sense, but I was fairly convinced of that. And I think just having those who have got a Labour interest uh, attending those kinds of events, which are not Labour Party events, is quite crucial. But obviously, as we've uh, Hamish has said, it's not just having a round table, it's actually attending those events that are taking place, organised by others. And in a sense, that's quite important. We also got ourselves involved in uh, neighbourhood plans uh, and the local plan, because if you, and I was a cabinet member in London, so I knew that planning and planning policy was the crucial issue for many businesses. Um, and businesses are concerned about how the planning arrangements actually will work for them in terms of enabling them to improve um, the, the business that they're running. So um, we got more involved in those things and split the roles up amongst us. The other thing that we set out to do, but uh, lockdowns got in the way, was then setting up a schedule of, of visits to major businesses in the area in order to be able to talk to them, but mainly to listen to them in terms of what it was that they needed in order to develop their business in the area. Um, that got in the way, so it's about to kind of restart once the uh, lockdowns become easier. So that- uh, Dale, was... can I just ask you to answer one question as you go along and, and then to yep. bring it to a close, because we're gonna uh, yes. run out of time soon. But we've had a question from Duncan Alsop about contact with LEPS, and I know you've got a long uh, history of, of working with, with, with LEPS and, and other local development groups of, of that kind. Could you just comment on his question? How, how do you go about contacting LEPS? I think one of, the, one of the key roles of the Bureau, which is within the constituency arrangement, is I think, as David Evans pointed out, is the relationship that you establish with the council. And if the council is, is in power, then there should be a cabinet member who has that responsibility. Um, the council has a direct relationship with the, with the LEPS, um, but it's also about helping to get businesses to understand that they have a role in articulating what needs to be done in their local area. 
So you use and work with the council cabinet member. If you have an MP, you work with them. If you have a regional mechanism as well, and there are many regional mechanisms, then you get involved on that basis as well. And you see the uh, relationship between the cabinet member, the Bureau, the Chulo, and the MP where they exist on a labor basis, together actually making the case of how to submit, respond to the work of the LEP. Thank you, Dale. That was great to, to get that answer worked into your talk. I'm going to have to stop you there because time is marching on and I, I, we've actually got a, a, a cabinet member from Croydon. I want to hear from her. But before that, can I ask uh, Liz Hind to speak to us? Uh, as I say, she's the Bulo for Aylesbury CLP as well as co-chairing our Women in Business uh, Policy Group in, in Labour Business. And why is it so important, Liz, that we have diversity in the appointment of Bulos? I, I, I'd like to hear from you on that. Liz, Liz Hine. Yeah, thanks, Hamish. So, yeah, usually when you're invited to speak about diversity, it's about underrepresented groups. Um, and I just wanted to start by sort of stepping back from that a little bit to think about who we identify as business leaders and who actually gets to talk to government as a business leader. Um, about the problems that they're having. Um, you know, I'm a leader, otherwise I wouldn't be in this big august panel. Um, and I own a business, you know, I run a pub. Does that make me a business leader? Does that mean that I get to skip quarantine? Well, obviously not, because I don't have Matt Hancock's phone number. And well, I actually pay my corporation tax. Um, so, I've been told to my face that obviously I can't understand business because I just run a pub. Well, yeah, because I run a pub, I can see what the fallout of COVID restrictions is. I can see the unfair business practices going on. But because only these business leaders, whoever they are, get to talk about business, then we're not getting our problems properly represented. And, you know, trade bodies that are supposed to be representing us are full of, you know, one side of, of business and, and one sort of business leader. And in fact, one of the main trade bodies for hospitality, British Beer and Pubs Association, actively campaigned against a Labour Party bill in Scotland that was designed to protect pub tenants. So, you know, that's kind of what we're up against. And at the moment, if you listen to them, they'll be telling you that we need to reduce beer tax. Well, no pub owner cares about beer tax because we're not people that pay it. And we don't think that any of those savings are going to be passed on to us. What we want is action on rent. And it's it's a crisis situation. And because we're not property owning mates of Robert Jenrick, they're not talking to us at the moment about what we want to see about arbitration processes. And there are a long list of really unfair business practices going on. Um, tenants that have, have broken free of a beer tie being told that they need to go back under it or pay thousands of pounds of unpaid rent. So those are the issues that you know I can see going on because I actually run that sort of business. So yeah, that's one sort of diversity that we desperately need to see in business conversations at the moment. But you know, going back to the other sort of diversity, you know, I run a business and you know, I get told that I don't understand business because I, I'm just one of those. Well, you know, the sorts of people that get told, well, you're just one of those, you don't understand business. Well, they're more likely to be women or other underrepresented groups. So black, minority, ethnics, disabled people, young people. And of course, you know, these things are intersectional. So, you know, we, we are really suffering from that sort of voice of business because we just don't fit in and, you know, we don't, we, you know, don't get to talk about business. And, you know, for me, I think one of the big wins that we could have with the Bulow Network, it, it's not about compromising on our Labour Party values, it's about extending those Labour Party values to new groups of workers. Because, you know, I am a worker, I run a pub, I do an awful lot of work. And, you know, 
unfortunately I'm in self-isolation and my poor old husband is is downstairs at the moment setting up for the football you know he's taken a large dose of tramadol because his ankle operation has been put off for two years so we're workers we've got exactly the same problems and um, I just happen to pay myself through a business because that's you know what you do if you if you want to start running pubs so you know we really need to extend those Labour Party values to people like me um, who you know because I work under a bit I am not getting fairly paid for my work I'm not getting represented you know all those sorts of problems that you know this sort of network of on the ground people is is aimed to address because you know we're the Labour Party and we work better when we work from the bottom upwards. And because we're the Labour Party, we also understand that equality, it's not just good for individuals, it's good for society, it's good for business, it's good for the economy. It's just a good idea to, to build that equality in there. But unfortunately, you know, some of those people who will have been told, you know, you're juster, those sorts of women, you know, black ethnic minority people, disabled people, all of those people, tragically, some of those people will have started to believe it because they've been told it so many times. Um, and I'm really pleased to see Nan Sloan on this call. So yeah, we'll be working closely with Labour Women's Network to you know, provide as much support as we possibly can. But I'm gonna end my section by just sort of laying down a challenge to you because the people that we need in the Bulow networks, those people that don't believe that they've got the right to talk about business, despite the fact that they've been running one for years. Yeah, they're in your CLP, they come to your meetings, they've been out campaigning with you, they're Labour Party people, you know, with those Labour Party values. So you need to go and find them, you need to go and talk to them, you need to go and understand them. Um, and most importantly, you need to ask them to stand. Thank you. Thank you, Liz. Now you know why we're so lucky to have Liz as uh, co-chair of our Women in Business Group, where she does an outstanding job speaking up for not just the hospitality sector, but uh, all parts of business. Uh, and bringing more women into our conversation is absolutely at the heart of the Bulow campaign and of everything that we do. But we also want to reach out to all the underrepresented groups. And actually, Dell gave you a bit of a, a heads up here, Manju, because he talked about the importance of our relationship with local government. And your role as a cabinet member in Croydon is, is at the core of those relationships that we want to build with local government. So it gives me great pleasure to ask Manju Shahul Hamid to uh, speak to us uh, about Bulo's working with local government. Manju. Thank you, Hamish, uh, for the introduction. Um, so absolutely delighted to join the launch of Bulo campaign and uh, being part of Steve Reeves and his uh, constituency, who all of you know, is the Shadow Secretary of State for Communities and Local Government. It's a great honor um, to share how important it is for the local authorities to promote the business layers and offices to champion business engagement. And obviously we heard from um, you know, uh, Dell um, and also Liz in terms of Liz's experience in um, uh, within her business in uh, in the local communities. And across the country, we have uh, some unique local areas and high streets, which we, we all want to protect and encourage to thrive. And when considering COVID-19 and the challenges facing the businesses and the economy, if ever there was a need for a bureau, now is the time. That's what I believe in when I was looking at um, the briefing notes uh, for, on uh, Bulo. And let's face it, and we have heard from all the speakers around, um, you know, Labour is not considered as the party of business and the feedback that I, as a cabinet member, uh, receive from the business communities in Croydon reflects absolutely the same. I mean, in addition to that, there is disparity between the shopping centre in our town centre and the high streets in our district centres. And this growing disparity between the two was due to shopping centers having a head start on high street in meeting consumers demands of creating a holistic experience. And this is also because the shopping centers are more able to take on the risk. And the reality is uh, an average high street 
you will have individual owners with individual shops. And from uh, the local data that we normally collect um, by talking to the businesses and also the officers uh, do by uh, um, conducting some of their local business surveys, it is this individual shop, which is often small, independent and local business is what makes our area such a great place to live. But shops, bars and restaurants and other businesses have been hit hard by the impact of COVID-19. COVID has also showed that local businesses know what local residents want and need. A council can be real engines of growth in supporting businesses, as we have mentioned, Hamish, um, and we have seen it um, in recently with COVID, the, the amount of uh, support the council has been providing to our local communities and the local businesses. And when I look at my bar of Croydon, we, you know, I just have to also mention that we have been on the news due to our financial situation recently. But in 2019, um, it seems like a long time ago for some reason, but um, 2019, Croydon Council won the best all-round small business friendly borough award. And the award recognizes the pivotal role played by the London um, uh, boroughs in supporting and promoting small and micro businesses across the capital. And Croydon Council has focused its efforts in uh, programs such as Croydon Means Business, which delivered support to more than 4,500 business delegates and also provided more than one million pound of business rate relief that Seema talked about earlier on in terms of you know, business rates uh, support. Um, as we heard from the other speakers this evening, it is that engagement of the council with the local business community, the representation of the micro and the family run businesses, SMEs and the social enterprises that enabled us to receive that recognition. And in response to um, COVID, Croydon Council established a Croydon Business Task Force with our internal partners such as the, uh, the BITS and also the external partners such as the Federation of Small Businesses, the London Chamber of Commerce, and also the LEPS, LEPS as we mentioned um, earlier on. And as a cabinet member, I do sit in uh, the, the LEP board. We were part of Costa Capital and also the London LEP, and, but then you know, we've been asked to come out of Costa Capital because as local authorities can't sit in two LEPs. Um, and this is, um, and that a business task force uh, was to understand the impact of the crisis, coordinate emergency interventions, and, the, and to inform the initial development of a medium and long term recovery plan. COVID also exposed many qualities that have been mentioned by a number of speakers earlier, including within the business communities. Council has already distributed um, a nearly 90 million pounds of business grants to our businesses in the borough. But when we started that whole process, we realized there are many micro businesses in our borough, especially in our district centers who need a lot of support in completing the simple business that application form to receive the right advice to stay open safely, following the government guidelines. And most importantly, there were um, language barriers. As for many small family run businesses in our district centers, English is not their first language. So when COVID restrictions were easing, um, we have visited some of the district centers with some business partnerships and council has been organizing some webinars to support them in completing uh, the grant, business grant applications. Um, and uh, we were also running a campaign for Love Croydon Shop Local um, in our district centers as part of the campaign. We have recruited uh, information officers Last month, um, I was in one of the local high street, um, Fountain Heath, and that is uh, part of a deprived area in Croydon, and um, David knows the area very well, I'm sure. And I was doing the walkabout with the information officers, and I was speaking to someone called Patricia, who ran a very small business with her son. Um, they are from the BME communities who were not aware of the business grants until they received the guide guidance from the information officers. And this is where Bulo can make a huge contribution in working with the business owners like Patricia to raise awareness and building that trust. And um, uh, last month, the Croydon Division of the Southeast London Chamber was also launched as uh, the, the main reason for launching that chamber uh, division was um, uh, the, some of the BAME businesses felt that they were underrepresented in the borough 
and the chamber aims to be the voice of the local businesses for their members and providing them with a platform to influence again. That is where Bulo could play a big part in working with our local chamber, work with our business improvement district and local authorities representing those businesses from the BAME communities and people with disabilities and um, any other minority groups who feel that they are underrepresented. And um, just to finish off, um, partnership work and collaboration is really vital for our economic recovery journey. And as a council, we were looking at the economic recovery and the priorities for the future. And whether it is paying the London living wage that David talked about, and we are uh, the London living wage borough, um, upskilling up and reskilling our population, especially that is the big part of our agenda, looking at the economic recovery, creating the green jobs for the green economic recovery. Um, and, uh, and or the cooperative model shared workspaces in our district centers for our local residents where they could go to the local cafe and make use of the local space and so on. These could be the priorities when we look at the economic recovery going forward. And even with COVID, I'm really positive about the future, notwithstanding the really challenging circumstances we find ourselves in, but looking forward to really working with the labor and business trade unions, uh, the mayors, uh, MPs and the councillors to promote and appoint the Bulos as champions of our Labour's local business engagement in um, Croydon and also um, across uh, London and outside. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. That was terrific. You're doing a great job in Croydon. I just wanted also to add an advertisement for the fact that Manju is a member of our economic policy group. It's one of the nine policy groups that are the engines of Labour businesses policy development and business engagement work. And so as you think about possibly becoming a Bulo or getting more involved, I would encourage you to look at our website, see what our policy groups are, look at the opportunities we have to get people like you involved in policy development work to support the party in developing its next manifesto. But I'm conscious of the clock and I want to uh, move to our, our last uh, speaker and I'm gonna have to ask her to uh, be respectful of those who need to uh, to get away to a sporting event, but uh, it, it's really nice to be able to welcome uh, a Tulo uh, to our uh, uh, to our event because, as you've heard from everybody, starting with me, it's the Tulo Bula partnership that's at the core of this, and it's not going to go anywhere unless we collaborate with trade unions and trade union officers in uh, the CLPs. So, uh, Dari is the Tulo for Redcar CLP. And uh, I'm really delighted to see you, Dari. And uh, would you like to, uh, to address us? Well, Hamish, I think the first thing I would like to say is that whilst I knew the initials, Bulo, I knew very little about it. <laughs> and I don't know whether you've been shy burns and you haven't been pushing it or I've just been asleep but I've learned an awful lot tonight and it's been very valuable. I thank all the speakers. Um, in reality, the Tulo officer in most constituencies in the North will play a significant role with their trade union colleagues in whatever area they are. So uh, that involvement is always there. Not perfect, but actually it is part of the way the Tulo officer works. And invariably it's looking for support from our, trade, from our trade unions and often looking for money. But when I saw the advert for the Bulow, I thought I am going to give this a real listen to. You see, we are part of the Red Wall area and please believe me, the Tories are pumping money in. We have Blythe in the North, which has never been anything other than Labour. And they're now moving in part of the Nissan factory and thousands of pounds, millions of pounds and thousands of jobs. If we don't get in there as a Labour organisation uh, to speak with and to be part of, which we've always been with Nissan Sunderland, we're really going to be cut out of the loop because the Tories get all the claps on the back. I was at the Port Authority the other day, Hamish, and there we have 300 people working. And the statement made again and again to me was Labour has forgotten about its working class roots. 
and it tells you how little we are talking to and more particularly listening to uh, people within our communities. So I shall work on that score. With the GMB, I have been looking at uh, resolutions that go to Congress on care homes, a critical piece of kit in terms of employment. But again, apart from the GMB, I don't know whether the political dynamic is in any way, shape or form part of that makeup. So please believe me when I say, you know, this has been very valuable. I will be back to you for more. In my parliamentary days, I sat on NEPIC, which is the chemical process industries think tank. We have 250 chemical process industries in the Northern region. Now, I've been out of that for some time, but I've made a, already a request to have a conversation with people, only as the TULO officer, but more particularly as a friend to the chemical process industry. So I've already put tentative uh, requests out. We have an ambassador uh, that networks for apprenticeships, speaking to schools and industries, and the car industry in particular up here has been massively supportive of getting the information that can be driven through the trade union movement to ensure good apprenticeships. So, there are, there are small signs that we could be welcome. And I'd like now to take this back to my CLP and see if we can't get a Bureau officer actually nominated and supported. And again, then maybe, you know, a conversation with you or with other members would be very valuable. Dell was particularly informative but I'm gonna end on a really down note because you need to know it. On Teesside, we had five Labour constituencies. We have two. On Teesside, we had every local council. We have one. We are in a very, very difficult position. So we do need the involvement with the industries that are just about beginning to survive and we know the Tories are putting boatloads of effort in and money in. We have a Tory mayor who tells lies just about as well as Boris Johnson and we really mean that. We are really hitting hard to actually get our voice seen and respected. In Mo Molan's day they didn't think of anything other than Labour and here we are really at the bottom end. So thank you for tonight. I will be back. Thank you so much, Dari. And uh, we look forward to working with you to getting a Bueller appointed in red car. And I think it's not unrealistic for you to say we've got a mountain to climb. We know that, but realism actually is the starting point for victory. Can I yeah, just yeah. come back to can I just come back to David for a final word? Because I think our conversation about Bulos David started uh, on a Zoom call last year when you said, "Ah, this is a way to win votes. This is not an academic exercise. It's about engagement, but it's also Absolutely. about winning votes." So, yeah, how yeah, would you like yeah. to just just send us off with a smile, David? Because we'll we'll have to go very shortly. But uh, I think it'd be uh, appropriate to to give you the final word. Um, Hamish, thank you. I'm humbled. Um, uh, to be given the final word after uh, hearing such tremendous speakers. And I've learned an awful lot uh, this evening. It's given me lots to reflect on. Um, uh, but our core purpose is to fight and win elections, to change the country, to change the world. Um, and um, it might seem like a small step. It might seem like a, um, a sort of rather, it might seem like a big step. It might seem daunting. Um, but I think if we can accelerate this programme and uh, the, I sense the energy and enthusiasm from the meeting this evening, I really think we can, um, then uh, it will help us to engage. And sorry, forgive me, I can't remember who put it, but we, I think it might have been Seema, we need to engage in new ways, new people. We need to reach out to uh, parts, parts of the community that we've either never had or we've lost touch with for whatever reason 
Uh, and this gives us a really practical way to, uh, to do that and to improve our tone of voice because we'll hear directly from people who are involved in their community because they run or they work for, for local business. And then that will just make us much better in the, the art of persuasion that we have to engage in to ensure that we do and we can, and we will win next time. And this will be a vital component of it. Thank you, Hamish. Thank you so much, David. And uh, I wanted to thank everyone who's taken part. We've had brilliant speakers, but we've also had a fantastic audience. David. And I can feel the energy too, like you, David. And we've had so many questions uh, and comments that we couldn't respond to. And I apologize for that. I apologize for the fact we're a little bit late, but you won't miss the match but I will make a commitment that we'll take all of the content of the chat and the Q&A and respond to it as soon as we can and take this forward so that everyone uh, is together on the same side, Tulos, Bulos, MPs, councillors, you name it. If you're Labour, get out there and support your Bulos and win back seats. So thanks everybody, stay safe and see you soon. Thank you, bye.